Hello and welcome to episode four of the Beastie Common Room Correspondence on August 31st, 2019. I'm Melanie. I'm Marjolaine. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Sophie. Hello everyone. <laughs> um, happy going back to Hogwarts Day everybody. Oh now, nice to yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> you're probably watching this on Sunday, which is the first of September. And as we everyone as everyone knows, we are going back to school today. Um, I hope that you packed everything that you need and that you got safely to King's Cross to platform nine and three quarters, and that you don't miss your train. So um should we talk shortly about that? <laughs> yes, we have feelings about going back to Hogwarts. <laughs> have you been at the King's Cross station, actually? Uh, yes, I have, but not on the, on the date that you have to go. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, you were early. <laughs> yeah, early or late, it depends. <laughs> Did but, you... Yeah. Did you enjoy the shop that they have at the platform? Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool shop. Yeah, and actually, yeah, uh, I I went there twice, and uh, the 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 last time I went there, the I I thought the shop was bigger than I remember, so I don't know if they expanded it or or not or not. I think but, I heard uh, they did expand it recently. Yeah, so <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, I have uh, been there, is it two years ago now, for the 19 years later celebration? That's and so uh, cool. <laughs> we, made a, we made a whole Harry Potter themed week out of it and visited several places, um, film locations and such. And uh, yeah, we went on the 1st of September to King's Cross and there was a lot of people and... Uh, we were just in the middle of everything and just everyone was so excited and dressed up and us of course too and uh, I completely missed the fact that um, <coughs> Warwick Davis was actually there and it wasn't even far from us and he was like taking pictures with everyone and they had a nice time over there and we saw it later that oh no apparently, <laughs> apparently like two three hundred meters from us and uh, of, away they were posing there and, and having a good time with him and we were completely oblivious to it <laughs> and um we were just waiting for 11 o'clock to arrive so we could all like count down until uh it was time and yeah Sadly, nothing spectacular happened. We were hoping that something special would happen because it was 19 years later. But uh, we had a good time anyway. We made some good friends there and uh, it's, it was really nice. And Jennifer is going there tomorrow. Yes, it's actually <laughs> the first time I've been. I'm so excited. Um, I've been planning it since I saw it last year. Um, when Jude Law and Eddie Redmayne were there. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I have to, it's really not actually that far from me. I was like, it's ridiculous that I've never been. I really need to go. Um, and this year it fell on a Sunday, so it's just kind of perfect. Um, and it was actually, tomorrow would have been the fourth year anniversary of me taking over my shop. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of, obviously, not everyone's going to know this, who watches this, but um, my shop just closed down. So tomorrow was going to be a sad day, but now I get to go to Hogwarts. <laughs> So it's going to be really fun. I'm very excited. Um, and I'm going with Samantha, who was on the previous episode. Um, and then nice. afterwards, we're going on a Harry Potter walking tour of London. And we will, there'll be a lot of Instagram stories on Speak Beasties Instagram. So definitely follow us because we're going to, we're going to go wild with the stories tomorrow. <laughs> I actually I just bought some more data today so I can like upload like a, like a crazy <laughs> person. <laughs> I think it's we're all great. looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I've never been. I'm a poor German girl. We don't have anything here. Oh. But with movie five, when it comes to Germany, I'll yeah. show you all. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. I'll be right there with you. I'm coming over then, and then we go together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny how the how Back to Hogwarts Day is becoming such a an official Harry Potter day. No, it's. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Even even in in France, it's the first time this year that uh, one of one France is um, organizing uh, an event to, tomorrow in Paris for back to Hogwarts, even if it's in Paris. Yeah, I shouldn't be back to Bogota. <laughs> but uh, of course, we don't have a platform nine and three quarters. But uh, the yeah. one of is bringing the the night bus, so there will be the night bus in in Paris That's tomorrow. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not in Paris right now, so <laughs> I mean that's, that's not awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer is gonna have all the fun for us. Yes. Yeah. I she bought sherbet lemons today just in case Jude Law's there. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so I've got just a bag full of sherbet lemons. So <laughs> I'm very prepared. <laughs> I wonder if you would get it if you gave him like lemon sherbet, and he would he be like, "What not, the hell? Sure. What? What? What?" what? <laughs> I do know. Yes. Last year, when he and Eddie Redmayne were there, it was only the people who were there really early who got to meet them. And I'm not getting there hugely early because um, the I couldn't get there that early from my town to to London. Um, the trains don't go hugely often, um, but you never know. Yeah. Maybe that was just are, in the world. <laughs> But you are going to be at eleven there, right? Hopefully, if nothing goes wrong, <laughs> we'll get there at ten o'clock, so we'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a Sunday. Sunday public transport can be slightly dodgy. Yeah, things fast. Okay. All right. Um, well, as we are celebrating back to going back to Hogwarts today, I have butter beer and stuff here also. So we are well prepared. <laughs> uh, we are also talking about Speak Beasties episode four today. And as always, we are looking at former topics and predictions. And hopefully this time there will be no strange beeping noises. I really, I'm really sorry and I apologize for last, week, uh, last episode. Uh, Jennifer was very um, confused. I, I thought was... it was me, no one else. <laughs> no one else heard <laughs> After uh, we recorded and we uploaded the episode, I had a rewatch to check how it went, actually, because you're missing every now and then some comments and such. So it's good to rewatch it again. And then I realized that there was this beeping noise and I was confused. Where's that coming from? And then you see Jennifer lifting her <laughs> headphone and I was like, oh, she's confused. She's checking if it's in her house. It was coming from my kitchen because my boyfriend was cooking and <laughs> he's not allowed to cook today <laughs> no he's actually not home right now so it should be silent <laughs> at least for a while now it would be creepy if your cooking supplies if would was, be yeah. <laughs> mm. the mysterious uh, beeping noise <laughs> yeah i think i i double checked to that yeah. i had uh, everything turned off because i was making the butter beer right before we started now so it should be fine <laughs> Okay, so does someone of you want to read the short summary or should I go or? No, you're doing it yeah, good. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so the short summary of the original episode four. Uh, episode four came out on January 31st, which is nice. Today is the 31st too. Uh, 2016 and was called Newt and his flying coat. Claire joined the uh, team of hosts for the first time all the way from London. We hear about Eddie's stunts um, and about Graves' fantastic coat design by Colin Atwood. Um, Matt Lewis said, the world of Harry Potter is safe with Eddie. I think we all agreed. Uh, the second Salemers might be ruining purple. Hiding and protecting magical beasts from muggles' eyes. The secret of Nessie's true identity. Why mag Magizoology Matters, in the Time Turner we to they talked about Albus Dumbledore, and in the Newt case was the height behind. Which still gives us nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> we are good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got there refined. I am trying to Everyone fool... Everyone go to Sophie's. <laughs> I'm trying to fool the height behind with the name Butterbeer, so I hope he... <laughs> It's I've only got lemonade. <laughs> Same. Oh. Well, we will see it live on camera, so we will send immediately someone to help you. 
<laughs> would you imagine how scary it would be if something suddenly appears up here oh. <laughs> right behind oh us? <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't come to that. No, the the yeah. only beast who will appear is is Dougal, who is right oh. right there. Okay, he's allowed to. <laughs> I did notice your a new poster is behind you, which I enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the nude one. Oh, the postcards. Yeah, your new that's postcards. That's the good one. one. That's really cool. <laughs> that's the one I sent you. <laughs> yeah, Should this one is you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's start with our first segment, which is called Just a Smidge, where we are talking about random things from the episode that we don't have to go into much detail. And our first point here is that Claire joins the hosts and makes us instantly jealous with her job description that she does uh, for MuggleNet, that she's in the MuggleNet senior staff, being a lot in the studio tour, that she takes part to Mina Lima exhibitions, book nights and such. I immediately felt like I would like to be there and do that. <laughs> That's so cool. We don't really have anything like that here, so, or at least I am absolutely not aware of it. So, Jennifer might have more access to that. I don't know yeah, how far, how far are you actually? It's a bit too far for me. It's about an hour and a half, two hours to London. And I generally okay. don't, I'd, I'd not been in like 10 years. So I went, in, I went in January to see Chris Child and I'm going again tomorrow. But um, generally it's quite expensive to get there. Yeah. Um, but I do, I have been to the studio tour five times, so. <laughs> hmm. That I've is done quite that a lot. bit. <laughs> I've been there twice and I'm already feeling like I want to go again. <laughs> have you seen the Gringotts expansion? No, I haven't. No, that's that that's so uh, good. The last time I went there was about two years ago when we went also to uh, King's Cross. That oh. was when, when the Forbidden Forest just opened. Oh, oh yeah. that's cool. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. um, that was quite something because I am hugely afraid of spiders. <laughs> Me too, <laughs> and they were everywhere. <laughs> so I was the one that was shrieking actually while going there <laughs> the first time, and uh, my friend just went on like nothing is going, <laughs> nothing is happening. <laughs> yeah, I went. I went only once. It was uh, a very long time ago. It, I think it was the first year it was open or something like that so if I, I I need to go back because there is so much more things that uh, I didn't see I didn't saw the um, Hogwarts Express I didn't yeah, saw Forbidden yeah. Like oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and of course Gringotts now but uh, yeah I really really want to to go back there I'm but. going in October and I'm very excited because um, I've not well, I didn't think I was gonna get to go again um because my dad actually drives me up every time because i hate driving um and public transport is impossible from my time to get to that part of london um and i got to the point where he was like please don't make me go again um <laughs> so my mum's going with me <laughs> and um we're gonna see gringotts and it's actually the time we're going is the dark arts exhibition as well because it's like around oh Halloween. nice um so that's gonna be really cool so if you're in the Speak Beastie common room, there will be many pictures. <laughs> Surprisingly, I've never been. Because <laughs> it's not in Germany. <laughs> Poor Sophie. <laughs> someday, someday you will. Yeah, yeah, someday I go everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, then the next point, Eddie, I call him in the dock, Eddie the Daredevil. <laughs> I think it was me, even though it's purple now, but... Uh... Yeah, I, I don't think I wrote that bit. <laughs> I think I wrote the bit in brackets. <laughs> yeah, you, you answered to it. Um, they talked about how he is very eager about doing all his stunts, and um, I think that's pretty cool, actually. I would like to try some of those things, maybe. Really? Maybe. I'm so accident-prone, I'd be really anti-stunt. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, please get someone else to do it for me. <laughs> I fall downstairs all the time. I can't be trusted. I think I would probably not dare to do anything that is too high up because I'm a bit afraid of heights. But oh. and spiders. And, <laughs> and spiders. spiders. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we were saying last night that when you were rewatching the film and trying to work out like which scene it was, 
Yeah, they and talked uh, talked about that he was suspended up in the air, and we thought yeah. for a moment, what scene was that? And then Sophie, bef just before I wanted to start to rewatch <laughs> the movie, she was like, "Oh, it's this scene, and it's this scene," and I was like, <laughs> "Sophie knows everything." <laughs> <laughs> because I watch interviews. Because I don't go anywhere. I, I watch interviews. <laughs> well, maybe you want to remind us uh, what the stunts were. Yeah, the, the stunts were the scene where they catch the alchemy. He was on a very big green tube and he was sitting there and then he jumps down and he um, is suspended in the air because he has to jump very high. Mm. And then Catherine is also suspended in the air because she has to jump from a high pile of boxes and then she jumps over with the teapot. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and both of them were just like, what the hell am I doing here? What is this? And then this is my job. This is what I do for a living. Mm. Yeah, they were, but they enjoyed it very much. Both of them. Uh, additionally to the stunts, um, Claire talked about her own sister that is a stunt woman. And uh, once again, I, I just think it sounded so cool. Um, I would love to just watch that for a day like what what kind of things do they do and how is that training and preparation and everything happening so so when i went to school with there's actually a stunt woman in one of the 007 films like wow. the james bond ones and um we went to see it at the cinema and like we were trying to work out because she was the stunt woman for the you know he's you know, he's always got a girl in each in every film. She was a stunt woman with the girl. Yeah. And there's a bit where, where she gets like punched in the face and we knew that was like that was definitely her. <laughs> so we <laughs> and then when we watched it on the telly, we kept like pausing it and rewinding it and then playing it again. I mean you can't tell that it's her, but you know that it's yeah. her. Yeah. I think <laughs> I think it's so cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's clearly uh, I think I, I could do something on set like uh, uh, making coffee or something like that, but definitely not <laughs> not any stunt. <laughs> no. Just watch other people do them. <laughs> I think watching, that was what I, I would do. <laughs> yeah, I would be very good at watching. Actually, it's it's uh, it's my job. I'm an anthropologist, so I watch people living. So I, I could make an anthropology study on the, on the set, but that's all I, I could do. <laughs> Uh, there was also more talk about fabulous coats, which we, we can never those. get enough, I think. Yeah. Um, there was a short interview of Colin Edwards, how she talked about um, designing the coat of graves, which I think turned out really great. I, I really love these sleeves and ah, just coats. <laughs> just sparkly. Yeah. <laughs> they actually have it in the studio tour now. They have the costumes for Fantastic Beasts. Mm -hmm. And it really does. I mean, I think they mentioned it later on when they'd seen the actual costumes. It is surprisingly shiny, but you can't really see it on film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tried to pay attention to it uh, while I rewatched the movie last night. And she talked about it has sort of a wet look to it, but you could not really see that on screen I think yeah. or or maybe um, my laptop is just <laughs> my screen is yeah maybe when that. it's like on a you know cinema screen yeah yeah just make a difference yeah I really liked how they called Graves the ultimate wizard though yeah. <laughs> I mean even though we never actually see the real Graves see him. In that yeah. film, I just I thought that was cool mm. yeah yeah this this quote is one of the the most gorgeous one from the first movie, I think it's, yeah, the the way that that Colin Farrell move in it, it's it, it is really really great. Mm. I do mm. love Queenie's pink coat though. Yeah, I think that's so pretty. <laughs> and when the end scene, because I rewatched the film last night when she had, um, she goes to see Jacob in the bakery and she's got like the matching hat. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's an outfit and a half. Yeah, it suits her very well. I think so. Surprisingly, that this woman won an Oscar for this, right? <laughs> she did. <laughs> it's the first Oscar that's ever been won for a high film, and it was won by Colleen Atwood for the costumes because mm. they're just insanely good. I think over the years she won a lot of awards for her work, actually. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just... she won for, for Chicago and another film I can't think of right now. But Yeah. Yeah, yeah they were, they were talking about that. I mean, 
Yeah, they were talking about that in the episode. I think it, uh, I didn't check the um, the records, but um, uh, I think they 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 talk they they talk about her being one of the most um, winning. She she won very uh, a lot of of Oscar, and she one of them. Mm. One of the records, I don't remember exactly what record, but... <laughs> yeah, did she win the most for a woman or something like that? I, yeah, I don't know, but nominated she was very often, but I think she only won only won those three awards. Mm. That's still more than I have, though, so... Yeah. <laughs> well... It's quite a lot to me. <laughs> I would love to get a coat made by her if I had the money for it. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, and I was actually with a um, one pocket. <laughs> yeah, I yes. remember, Important. remember that. I don't know if you remember that uh, there were a lot of YouTubers who had the chance to visit the set of uh, Crimes of Grindelwald, and uh, yeah. so we we had a lot of videos where all the YouTubers were dressed by Colin. Yeah, to, I remember that for the day, and they are, she was creating. Uh, different outfits for everyone and uh, <laughs> I was so jealous <laughs> and I was trying to, to imagine myself well how wh what kind of look uh, I want to be to be the a witch in in the streets of Paris <laughs> I, really to... I was jealous because they also got to meet Eddie at the end of the day yeah. <laughs> and they were still dressed <laughs> oh that sounds so good Oh, was it but, that one where they had uh, also sort of a photo shoot, each yeah. one of them in the, one, in the actual in this like, set? The, the, yeah. the French yeah. Diagonale, I don't oh, remember the yeah. name of it. But this one made sense. Remember that for the first film they had other YouTubers that had nothing to do with Harry Potter? I got why people got mad, but this oh, time people remember. got mad. And but this time they had Tessa Netting and the Super Carlin brothers mm. and yeah, whoever. Yeah, Brazil voice. It, it, it was all the it, Potter it, people. Yeah, yeah, it made sense this time to have them. Yeah, and it's I think it's nicer as well when it's people that you know how much it means to them as well to be yeah. there. I think that does make a difference. Mm. I, I, Tessa cried so much and her friends. They yeah. were so excited to meet her because suddenly J.K. all uh, walked into the room. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but not the beastie people. Not yet. <laughs> no, yeah, anyway. We can dream. <laughs> Warner Brothers, if you're watching, I am available. <laughs> <laughs> you are not too far. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that far away. I could get there. <laughs> yeah, I rub it under my nose. <clears throat> Hey, I could play owner of a wool shop. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Does Eddie Redmay need to buy some wool? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he needs to make a little like pullover for the Niffler oh, babies. Oh. That would just be too cute. I couldn't cope. Oh my god! Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, if because Pickett had a cold, he should have made him a little scarf. <laughs> oh god! That would be so adorable. <laughs> I think but for picket you don't really have to knit something, you can just take the whole Just get the wool and wrap them in So moving on to Matt and his comment. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm just I've not been reading the doc. This is me catching up. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Um when he said that the Wizard of World is in good hands with Eddie I remember, I mean, I was camp, I hated crime, not crimes of the world. <laughs> Wait, are you? Where am I? Um, Chris Child, when it came out, I was not a fan. And now I love it, um, since I've seen it on stage. But, um, so I was a bit cautious about the first Fantastic Beasts film, because I wasn't sure which way it was going to go. Um, so hearing that from an actor at the Potter film saying that, you know, Eddie's doing the right thing, it's all going to be okay, was... Um, I think it was really reassuring. I mm. definitely thought so as well. Anyway, although yeah. I really wish I could have actually been there as well. <laughs> like, why do you know all these famous people get to visit us there? That's not cool. 
I can't even imagine the movie without Eddie anymore. Like he is nude. Yeah, he's so perfect. He's last last week, only last week, a new uh, trailer of his new film came out. And I have not seen the trailer because I cannot watch a movie right now with him where he's not nude. <laughs> I, the, the only thing that I love every time an Eddie movie comes, trailer comes out or a Catherine movie trailer comes out, there's always these people who make it like this nude with this Tina and then they have a shot of the new oh, <laughs> trailer. Yeah. And this is, I, I, I am amazed. This is the first movie of Eddie after Fantasy Beast 1. Really? He had, he had mm. Fantasy Beast 1, then this animated one. This, uh, yeah, the oh, early, early man, man or something, yeah. Early man, oh, yeah, and then COG, and now the error notes or something it's called. Yeah, I was gonna say, my mom's telling me what, what, about one this morning that's about hot air balloons and weather and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's coming out soon. Maybe he I also did his own stunt, right? Yeah, he did his own stunt again, and uh, well, he got hurt. <laughs> you remember when he came with um. What's them called? What's it called? Um, oh, the he had a cast on his leg. Yeah, was that yeah. For that? Yeah. Oh. oh. Because he was doing his own stunts. This oh. little stupid daredevil. <laughs> daredevil. <laughs> Did we have it further on in the doc about um, the only time he's injured himself doing a stunt? Yeah. During um, the. Um, this is actually game. one of the Sweet Beasted trivia questions for later in the week. Um, oh. So if you watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, you know the, uh, <laughs> but, um, the only time Eddie hurt himself doing a stunt on Fantastic Beasts, at least, um, was during the mating dance for the Arumpan. Because he pulled his groin. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. No. <laughs> would be, who would be able to say it without? <laughs> oh, I just think that's hilarious. That's what you get for doing your own stunts, Eddie. You get pulled the groin. <laughs> I would not even think that this would be counted as a Stunt, but just the insane movements he makes, I'm actually yeah. not surprised. That he was he really something. enthusiastic about it, though. I think yeah. that was like he's really into <laughs> yeah. it. He's really throwing everything into it. Um, yeah. But he just he's, he is a perfect new. All of the casting, I think, is actually it's yeah. just been incredible. It's a perfect new. Everyone is Dad's just the like perfect new mm, and Alison is the perfect new. <laughs> <laughs> Um, somehow uh, today I feel like when looking into the doc I didn't have time anymore to see the editions of uh, Marjolin and uh, Zofie <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, I know nothing I'm, I'm almost a bit, <laughs> what? bit like, wait where are we <laughs> what is this now <laughs> yeah I was I a bit late to I didn't my notes right now. <laughs> no no I, it's, it's fine but it's just it's uh, you you're green <laughs> right, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, considering that already in 1692, wizards agreed that magical beasts should be hidden and protected from muggle eyes, Newt should be very much aware of those laws, I think, and still he just lets them escape so easily. Um, I can't even believe that this was the first time that this happened just now. I mean, I don't think it he really has much consideration for the laws anyway, because, you know, you're not supposed to do magic in front of muggles, and he did mm-hmm. that whole bunch. True. It just, I'm his commander, I do what I want. Um, <laughs> which doesn't seem very Hufflepuff to me, I don't know. <laughs> mm, I don't know. It, it fits his character, I think. <laughs> Yeah, he... he, he d- he doesn't like authority of any sort, so mm. yeah, I'm not too surprised, but yeah, it's it's a bit reckless. <laughs> it but. seems like if it doesn't make sense to him, then he just disregards it and he's just following his own nose, basically. I mean, yeah, his but... nose is pretty good, but also, you know, <laughs> there's laws yeah. for a reason, dude. But fixing, <laughs> fixing his let him case, be a wizard. Yeah, fixing his case should be a priority for him. I mean, because, uh, at the end he put some string around it. Yeah. That's all he needs to do. I also yeah. every time... He just got some string around it. I'm also every time thinking that um, right in the beginning when he's at customs and um, the officer wants to see what's inside and he 
pushes the little thing and it says muggle worthy so it's just when he opens it showing his clothes folded nicely and the scarf and everything why not always keep it that way then it's basically out. locked and they can't get out right because then we wouldn't have a movie yes good point <laughs> what i don't like what what I don't like movie, is wouldn't it? if we just everybody... went to new york and it went through <laughs> Everybody always says you should know about this law, blah, blah, blah. But what I don't like is uh, he puts his beast in so much danger if he's mm -hmm. not more aware of it. Yeah, and that's, that's what, that's I, what think, I don't like. That's what I think also that he hears while being on the ship still, he talks to Dougal. We are almost there. It's okay. Calm down and yeah. just lock it properly. He is so worried that something could happen to his beasts that why aren't you more cautious why don't you make sure it's properly locked and there can always be something happening like for example when he crashes uh, crashes into jacob and the suitcases are falling down it could always jump open so and yeah. everything could spill out suddenly <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminded me of that line when he says, I can't remember it exactly, um, but, you know, they're, they're surrounded by the most dangerous creatures in the world, yeah. humans, and humans. it's like, well, you didn't lock your case, dude, so, like, <laughs> what did you expect? What I just mm. thought also, do these animals go through the little door? They, they must go into his shed, right, to get yes, out? Yes, and then go up. Yeah, but the, and how did the they get in there? <laughs> I mean, if the rumpen is in this little shed, the whole shed would be bursting apart. <laughs> but then, I mean, in the basement of his um, flat in London, um, in Crimes of Grindelwald, his shed is there, even though his case is also there. So I think it's just magic. <laughs> I, I remember just, that... Just, just magic, that don't think too much about it. <laughs> J.K. Rowling was very adamant that she wanted it to be with stairs. So... This is something typical for JK or she wants to have something and she has this idea, but then sometimes it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like when they capture the rampant, it's like sucked in, yeah. Sucked in, thank you. Uh it's sucked in and where does it go? I mean, does it rightly go into it? It might just send it like straight or... back into its its place it's, because it's there. Is there a slide for the beast? <laughs> what is it? Otherwise, it's just a new shed. Like what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Would you be able broken. to get up the little ladder as well? With this like, little hoop. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're By just. By the way, the like... ladder, the the ladder looks horrifying to me. I'm always also afraid I of like the height. I would not climb this thing down. Up, uh, maybe, but not down. I would yeah. not go into. <laughs> Maybe yeah, there's so, just a different accent access point, also a different type of door that he can activate or something that they can go like straight to there. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe, that's maybe the case recognize uh, who tried to go inside the case. So if if it's mm -hmm. new, it's, it's the shed because uh, it's it's his working yeah. place. And uh, if it's a beast, it goes straight to the to the the area where. It's supposed to go, so maybe maybe the the case recognize what is trying to go inside. So maybe mm. it's magic again. So I mean, he's a not? wizard, so <laughs> magic. <laughs> it's magic. Can't explain everything. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, there was the, the Jari story was mentioned in um, this, the from, I think they read the extract, I listened to this, I always do this every time, I listen to the podcast too early and then I don't remember, um, but if I remember rightly, I think Shannon read it out, was Shannon even in this episode? Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> good. Um, and I don't know, I, I didn't just, listen. <laughs> I just thought this was such a JK moment, just like that funny little story with the Jarvi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And who thought that old guy was a gnome and started swearing at him? <laughs> I just thought that was just really funny. And it would be cool to see. I think, Melanie, you put in that you like, we hope we see it. Um, yeah. Not sure if we would, but I hope we at least see a Jarvie at some point. Um, partly because they sound hilarious. Also because Newt was expelled because of one. So surely we would. Yeah, yeah we I think about we... that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think we talked about this last time, actually. Mm-hmm. I just no. I did think I think I brought it up last time as well. I just want the draft. <laughs> <laughs> if we mention it enough, maybe we'll get one. <laughs> so, uh, are you watching? Give us the Jarvi. I'll play the Jarvi. <laughs> <laughs> so as as Shannon loves to agree, it's the Jarvi for you. Definitely. I mm-hmm. but I agree. I love the Jarvi. I want to see it. Yeah. I because I'm Sounds such so uh, I uh, cause, uh, curse so much in my daily life. I'm really toning it down here. So this thing could be my Patronus if <laughs> if, if I had a choice. <laughs> if it wasn't Tina, yeah. <laughs> I'm like the opposite. I do like old lady swears. <laughs> but I just think it's just really funny and just such a JK Rowling moment. It's just, I don't know, I just love her. Mm, yeah, I love it that's uh, one of my favorite favorite thing from Joe. All these uh, small tastes, slightly vicious and funny, and yeah, uh, I love I love this kind of story. Uh, just an addition: if someone does want to curse, I can tell my boyfriend to cook, and we have a beeping. <laughs> we have a beep. <laughs> <laughs> that's the crazy thing about Europe: we can curse on live TV. <laughs> we're <Yeah>. not live <laughs> no but we can we can but say we are, stuff that but we the also Americans don't yeah we also we don't edit this <laughs> yeah we don't edit so hopefully there will be no swears <laughs> oh uh, um the oh there was they kept saying Ilfracombe wrong in the podcast so I would just like to announce here that it's actually <laughs> not that far from me um, and it's, you say Ilfracombe, uh, you don't say the B. Um, whenever it ends in like C O M B E, you don't. No B. It's Ilfracombe. They kept saying Ilfracombe, and it was getting on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> other, other languages with their silent letters that don't make any sense. I'm looking at you, Marshall, in the French. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But I think in, in, in the UK in general, you have so many places that are written so differently from how you say it that it's actually mm, really exactly, difficult if yeah. you're not from there to know. I mean, I live in South Gloucestershire and I still can never spell Gloucestershire. I just put South Gloucestershire because there's just there's too many letters in it. <laughs> and I got a degree in English. <laughs> <laughs> That's not making it any better. <laughs> uh. We stick um, to our letters, the way we write it, the say, way we say it. <laughs> in German? Mm. Sometimes. <laughs> most, <laughs> most of the time. We kind of like to drop some letters as well. We don't pronounce them that much. Just thinking of my own last name, which ends with an E-R. I don't really pronounce the R at the end. And that's why everyone in Finland always writes with an A or an E at the end. And they don't understand that's E R at the end. So. You say, you say Becca. How do you say it? Becca. Becca. I say Becca. I now say everyone Becca. knows my last name. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> they can stalk you on the internet now. <laughs> <laughs> well, stalk me. I don't care. <laughs> I say it, but I do because of my accent, I, my, my dialect. I drop a lot of letters. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I'm. But I do say your. So but I just, do say your R. We're like but not, but not so strongly. Becca. Not that it. Becca. 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 <laughs> Becca. <laughs> That's more no- northern Maybe Germany. Not. <laughs> not that it really matters. We can drop this now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this happened. <laughs> Everyone is already thinking, what the hell are they talking and going on about? <laughs> also from that's the... what we do <laughs> <laughs> well this is what we do this in our hangout they part. asked yeah. for a hangout this is this it. is what they got <laughs> <laughs> um also when they were talking about the overcome incident um they it was mentioned in the muggles who notice book um which i would like to read please joe um i think that's yeah. hilarious yeah. <laughs> and also yeah. where's our encyclopedia um, because we want that too. Not that we're yeah. demanding at all, but we need a Jarvie and an encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> we need everything. <laughs> Give it to us. <laughs> Can I just live inside Joe's brain for like 24 hours, please? 
Mm. <laughs> Coming out with all the secrets. <laughs> yeah, sadly, I think we, we will not have the encyclopedia before the end of Fantastic Beasts. No, I don't I think, think so. the encyclopedia was the plan before, when, when she was thinking about not going back to this world in any other form. So, yeah, it was she went many back. years ago, and then yeah. for the more came. <laughs> Yeah, and then obviously with Cursed Child and then Fantastic Bees, I'm not sure it's ever going to happen. I think the reason she did Pottermore was so, like, you wouldn't have to buy an encyclopedia, all the information is just there. Mm. Um, but I also like physical things. <laughs> <laughs> she says, with like a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it on my wall, Joe. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I could not put so much stuff on my wall as you did. That's why yeah, I have this little see, space see, right, right there. Yes. Um, <laughs> Over her shoulder, this tiny spot. <laughs> there. <sighs> um, oh, <laughs> I don't want to read my next note. <laughs> I was already thinking, huh, oh, do you want to read the next one? <laughs> they yeah, so, were talking about the dragon the lila the lila. Like, lila is like an inflatable like bed thing um has anyone seen jaws no, no. <laughs> okay uh, in when in jaws you know the kid goes out on like a inflatable thing that's a lila um ah but, yeah oh yeah okay um floaties I always... <laughs> are very different in the uk i think that's what americans call like floating objects i guess um in the UK, it is poop related. <laughs> <laughs> After you mentioned this already in our chat uh, earlier in this week, uh, and I was re listening to the episode, uh, Claire actually also quickly drops still that is something completely different in, yeah. in the UK. <laughs> and then they immediately move on to the next topic. And yeah. I was just thinking, no, ah, no, now I get it. it. <laughs> it it's poop related. <laughs> so now you know. <laughs> Thank you very much for letting us know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we also had, I don't know if it was the first time. Was it the first time they talked about Sasquatch? I can't remember. I can't, I, I really so. can't remember. I don't think we've had a Sasquatch reference yet. We're only at episode four and we already don't remember anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's eight weeks ago. <laughs> um, I'm happy I, I can't know, I remember, just... but I did tomorrow, this morning. <laughs> no, I but don't... the way the way Ariel was talking about it, I think it was the first time because she mm -hmm. went into detail about why why she loved Sasquatch. So I think yeah, it no. was the first mention. But at least sometime from the, also again just from the very beginning, like the augury, uh, the Sasquatch, and now we are just waiting for the first mentioning of pastries. Pastries. I think he's soon. I think he's episode ten. 12. I think that was like, oh, so you're okay. good. Um, I know it's the title of an episode. Yeah, it's, and, and we checked, I know that we checked in the first episode. See, I can remember stuff. See, look at you. <laughs> yeah. So Sasquatch is one of our uh, emblem from the, the podcast. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I loved the t-shirt they did that said um, we put the sass in Sasquatch. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would oh, yeah. like them to do those again, please, because I want one. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're watching Ashley and Megan, please, <laughs> please, please. Uh, wasn't there some kind of um, pin or something that they had? Yes, there is a pin and there is a shop now on the website, but um, we're not allowed to buy anything yet because Ashley has put the pins somewhere very safe. We're um, not allowed yet. <laughs> she needs to find them first. <laughs> okay. They're in a very safe place. Um, uh, and then for, for Secret Center, everybody goes to the everyone shop. Everyone gets pins. <laughs> and we're like, yeah. I wouldn't mind it. No, same. <laughs> same. Uh, we, we have... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I think the, oh, the, the, last, the last point here in this segment is um, Aaron's fabulous way of ending the episode, actually, which is, I am under construction, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> if you have 
re-listened to the episode, um, Aaron kept having throughout uh, construction happening in the background um, and had to mute his microphone several times. And he was, at, at some point, I actually forgot that he's actually on the show until he <laughs> yeah, finally so came he, back he on. He was just messaging <laughs> in, wasn't he? With his yeah, show. it was like... And uh, oh, Aaron is saying. <laughs> yeah, the girls surely had fun to just uh, talk and uh, make fun of his situation. <laughs> so we're really glad. We're a bit worried there might be like a construction curse, and yeah. we would have construction. But I mean, it's pretty quiet around here. Yeah, here for me it's fun. very loud because, uh, let's, like I said, there's the festival going on in our castle, and it's uh-huh. just <laughs> something, <laughs> something similar. <laughs> yeah. And they I can't open my happening. window. That's, that's that's the worst part. I can't open my window. It's like 300 degrees in here. I still can't believe it's like 15, 14 or 15 degrees difference between Finland and Germany right now. Well, is on it, Tuesday. Is it still? Yeah. Is it still? I don't, 30, know. I don't know what. I don't have a, a thermometer. Thermometer or what? Okay. Thermometer oil to like to say it. Uh, in my in my bedroom. Marshall, I can you say, say that it's hot in the in France as well, isn't it? Yeah, I, at least south of France. I don't know all the way, but uh, I, I can I can attest that uh, right now it's still 30, 31 degrees. So. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> We're just getting over our little heat wave. It's cooled down here, so. Um, that's that's a normal temperature for this time of year here. So that's what is really? so painful because it's. <laughs> It's normal. It's just summer here. It's but yeah, that's it's what I'm never. saying. It's normal for you, but for us, <laughs> it's not normal to have. But it's I mean, too have, I, I don't like it. So. <laughs> we do have 30 degree days, but not weeks. It's just it's just too long right now. I just had a quick look. We have 17 degrees right now. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna look too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Everyone Sorry. Temperature. Partly no, 15 no. degrees, partly cloudy with a gentle breeze. Maybe Why are we, we can... talking about the weather? <laughs> <laughs> I Maybe mean, we can manage. We do have a break on that... this podcast. I think we had to have <laughs> weather conversation at some point. <laughs> Maybe you can all sometime come here and we're going to sit all in yes. front of the camera together and have a chat. So it's nice and, and cool be nice here and cool. right now. <laughs> We, can we have some beer. Yeah, we have some butter beer to share. To share, and some beer without butter. <laughs> what I hide behind? <laughs> and we can find the mysterious beeping noise. Cerberus. Dumbledore. Yeah. Shall we reopen the case? Sounds fabulous. Let's and do it. Let's move on to the main discussion, which I have to quickly have a look at. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I made a made a note of that. Uh, this main discussion would actually be perfect for the prediction section, but we had so many thoughts on this um, and included the hosts actually into it also that we are going to be a bit more talking about the detail. Um, in the time turner, they talked about possi- the possibility of Albus Dumbledore having a role in the movies. Uh, is he going to show up as a professor at Hogwarts teaching Newt, or as a hot young professor that the girls <laughs> would swoon over, like they did with Gilderoy, Gilderoy Lockhart? And yeah. uh, don't know yeah, about you, he, but I'm swooning. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that's that is happening. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, and that we could uh, possibly also see Newt and Dumbledore developing their relationship, how this came to be um, after school. Um, since we know he has been, Dumbledore has been providing the, is it called forward um, of Fantastic Beasts. So we know they know each other at this point. I think that's yeah. all we know. Um, Shannon Um, also said, um, this is a direct quote, "Um, I think if Dumbledore shows up in a movie, it wouldn't be the first movie. Um, So she was right there. Um, He just got name dropped in the first movie. And then we actually see him in the second. 
And Erin also says that if we do see Dumbledore and Fantastic Beasts, it has to be really, it has to be a really small cameo. I don't even think there would be a flashback uh, of them going back to school together. No, going to school together or of him teaching Newt, which everyone else seemed to agree on. Um, sorry, guys. Oh, we definitely got that. <laughs> Sorry, Aaron. There goes your Dougal Award away from you. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to take that. that. Cool. Um, yeah, they were hoping for just a simple name drop, that it would be enough, just in passing by, and um, as to not shift the focus of uh, uh, away from Newt's own story. And Claire also said anything more than that would be too on the nose. So yeah, so that's why the three of them don't like uh, the second movie. It's because <laughs> it could end wrong. It? So. <laughs> We're getting more into detail to that uh, of that. <laughs> that's why this is the main discussion. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm so excited to talk about Dumbledore, guys. <laughs> I'm so excited. So oh, wait, let me. Yeah, I need to grab my we Dumbledore have wand. We have Dumbledore right here. Look at that beautiful face. <laughs> oh, you've got the wand! Yeah! Oh, it's so pretty. I don't have anything of him. Oh, I might have him somewhere in this <laughs> magazine. Could I but get I the old version of Dumbledore? <laughs> <laughs> He's right here. That's actually. the old man Dumbledore. That's, See, he didn't age triple. well, did he? Really. What is that like? What, what's, what's the difference in between these two? How So he's 40 here, right? 46. 44. 44. 40, 44, 45. And he was, and there he is. how old was he in the later ones? Uh, 100 Where something. Where did he say 150? Uh, oh, yeah. He was born in 1920, 100, yeah. Oh, he's Where? even holding this tiny, you know, the wand you've got, Marjolaine. It's like a teeny tiny version in his little hand. <laughs> So detailed. Maybe when he uh, breaks the the blood pact. The blood pact, yes. <laughs> it makes him age. And suddenly, like <laughs> this, <laughs> this is the cause. Like when you of... press the age line. <laughs> yeah, or maybe during the duel, uh, the duel was so intense that they, they keep uh, aging. The both of them were uh, aging, and uh, yeah. at the maybe end, it's just the spell. Maybe it's just Grindelwald, just like. <laughs> And then he's like, No, I'm not in love with you anymore. And he (laughs) hates me. And now you're an old man. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not in love with you anymore, but you're too hot. (laughs) I can't make you an old man. Yeah, I can't. You have to be old and gray. And (laughs) because I can't. Okay, so now that uh, we do have two movies and we know that we are getting the full story about Dumbledore and Grindelwald, we actually asked Ariel, Aaron and Shannon in the common room how they feel about this whole thing now, three years later. And um, if they have asked if they have changed their minds since then, um, are they into this idea? And if so, why? And did the casting choice of Jude Law as Dumbledore had any influence on that? Okay. So we got answers, thank God. And <laughs> here's what quickly. Ariel had. Yes, here's what Ariel had to say. With the first movie and the Grave Grindy reveal, that obviously changed the story way more than we could have predicted. I think had that not happened, a casual mention or cameo from Dumbledore would have been great. Honestly, I'm not living for the focus shifting from Newt to Dumbledore or and Grindelwald, mostly because A, we know so little about Newt and his story, and B, we already know what happens with Dumbledore versus Grindy, so it wasn't super necessary to visit or revisit the storyline. I was on board with following Newt around with his beasts and the core four introduced in Fantastic Beasts. I do love Shoot Law as Dumbledore, though. It was perfect casting, but it seriously could have been left as a minor role and not this whole convoluted thing they've got going on now with Newt, somehow involved in the greatest visiting rivalry duel. 
I don't There's think a, like, the eye roll emoji at this point. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like <laughs> that was important. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the casting of Jude has changed his opinion. I really do love him in the role. I just don't like the direction that this story has taken. I suppose uh, maybe movie three will change my mind. Uh, are we just reading them all and then discussing it at the end? Is that how we're doing? I thought so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Aaron said, Did first of all, can I just say, Aaron, I love how you word things, and I'm really <laughs> looking forward to saying Grundle, but um, I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so Aaron said, um, I agree with Ariel. The fact that Grundle, but so good, is involved in this movie changed everything, and we're kind of trapped in this narrative shift from Newt to Grundledore. I wish, sorry, I need to make that font big. <laughs> <laughs> it's so small. <laughs> There we go. I wish we could have just had a movie that was a story of Newton and the fascinating adventures he documented in his pursuit of studying magical beasts. It feels kind of unfair that they promised such a story and then they pulled the rug out with, hey, surprise, is that stuff that you already know, but now Johnny Depp's in it, so you like it, right? I think Jude Law is a fine Dumbles. I just think that it shouldn't have been a series about him. Also, they should have aged him more, as we were saying, just for mm. continu continuity, because he totally, I don't understand this reference, but no. um, he totally ripped Van Winkles from the 20s to the 40s, which feels kind of weird. I think that Fantastic Beast series overstepped from subtle winks to the fans to just overdone fan service. I mean, making the story about Dumble Grand is one thing, but making Credence a Dumble, there are more magical people in the world than just one family make new characters and let them have their own stories. Mm -hmm. And Shannon still added, I did to everything Ariel and Aaron said, so now I don't have anything to add. <laughs> 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 so what are our thoughts uh, about this? I, mean, I we know we I have thoughts for Jude Law, but... Um, yeah, <laughs> who doesn't? <laughs> he is a beautiful man. Um, <laughs> I remember, I think I might be in the minority in that I kind of loved, I mean, I loved the first film, I learned about Newt and the Beast, but um, I remember when we first found out, I'm, I could be wrong, but I think it was when we found out there were five films, they also said it's leading up to the big duel between Grindelwald and Dumbledore, yeah. and I remember being so excited about this because I love Deathly Hallows, it's my favourite book, I, mm -hmm. I'm really interested to see that aspect, I think it's going to look really cool on screen. Um, so I was, I'm happy with this shift. I'm in, I'm interested to learn more about Dumbledore because he's such, like, he's got so many aspects to him and I think he's a really interesting character. I know a lot of people aren't happy because, like, and I do get what um, Aaron said when he, you know, says just let these characters have their own stories. Um, but I, I do kind of like the direction it's going in. I'm not sure how everyone else feels. Well, I agree with all three of them. I do not like that we are introduced to four new characters and then in the second film only we get three of them completely left out of the story. Nobody has really something to do. It's only kind of like Newt who has kind of something to do with the story really. And um, we get so many new characters and I don't know how to feel about them if if you get to see them anymore or if they are just treated like the other three and if the whole focus will be set on uh, Grindelwald and, and Dumbledore. So I don't know. I would love to see more about Newt and the other three main characters more than... Because we know what happens eventually. We know this is coming. Mm. And we also know that uh, Dumbledore and Grindelwald don't meet until the fight so I don't know really how much they can do against each other I mean we could get um, a bunch of other character stuff before that happens I guess I hope so I, I mean that's my hope for movie 3 and 4 that we get, go back to the main four characters of mm -hmm. the first movie yeah, that's what I think too. Because I think the the first movie was the introduction of the of these four characters. The second one is the introduction of Grindelwald and uh, the big protagonist and and the relation that will be the the um, the way to move forward the the plot uh, for the three last movie. But 
now that we have all in place, they can go back to to the to the quartet and uh, and make make us. I think they try to make it for the second movie, but um, these four characters that I we all love, we all love them because they are relatable, and we can live of this adventure through them because we can relate to them. I don't think we can relate so much with Dumbledore. I love him, but he's a complicated man, and uh, we <laughs> he's too brilliant. He's too it he's fascinating and I, I love so much that we hey, I we, think we're pretty brilliant <laughs> <laughs> of course we are but uh, <laughs> yeah but yeah I, I I'm, I'm with Jennifer I, I, I actually I'm really happy that we I have another people who is pretty much exactly on the same page than me because I remember really mm. clearly when when they announced the um, the 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 five when Joe announced the five movie and uh, that the end would be the duel uh, it would for me it meant that the end would be uh, 1945 and we we will have all this very interesting uh, time period to cover and uh, and that's what get me really into it because um, of course I was excited about about a fresh start and uh, a Hufflepuff hero like Newt and I love Beast too but um, the historical context was what attracted me the most uh, since the beginning going back to time and uh, and exploring this particular period the 20s mm. the, the, the 30s who are and the 40s who are such an important uh, time to understand even today so so that's what interests me the most maybe because I'm a historic nerd but uh, <laughs> I, I, I I am really really interested with what they will do uh, with yeah. this storyline but yeah and I'm, I'm happy that we have these four, uh, four characters that are the way that we will follow the story because they are more relatable than the uh, if it if they choose to do only a, a film with Grindelwald and Dumbledore, it would be epic and it would be big and uh, interesting. But uh, these characters are still are still important, and I'm sure that will be still important in the future for for us. Mm. Yeah, for us. But I I felt in the second movie, uh, Jacob, Queenie, and Tina were just left out kind of like none of them really did something contributing to the story i mean i think because there were a lot of new characters introduced um there was this quote from joe that i can't remember um but i did tweet it on our sweet beastie account but this was too long ago for me to stretch it back but it was um joe saying that she wanted to introduce all these different characters and all these different motives and then like grindelwald in the midst of them as well then kind of see who would take a side and who wouldn't and I did love that aspect of Crimes of Grindelwald but in a way it would be nice if they went back to a smaller cast in the third one because now they've introduced all these characters we know they're there um it might be easier with less I think that's well. probably what's going to happen yeah, yeah. I, I think hope that's... I hope that um we know what we get a new character in the next movie um you Leila Hicks so yes. I hope she will stay the only New character. New one, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I I I can just agree. I, I'm doing the Shannon thing now. I don't have much to, <laughs> to <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, like, no, it's good, it's good. Um I I just feel exactly like you guys also. That but who? Because there is two sides here. Yeah, just two sides. You have to pick a side, Melanie. No, you don't really have to pick a side. I mean, we all kind of. No, I. That. I do kind of. I am kind of in the in the middle, though. I have to say that I'm. I'm really curious about every single detail that we can get our hands on, and I would love to know more about how this whole thing happened between Dumbledore and Grindelwald, because we don't have that not too much detail on it and it would be really interesting to see but at the same time I feel like I also don't want that to be necessarily the main thing we kind of were thinking that this is more about Newt and about his beasts and you know 
having the addition of of Queenie, Tina, and uh, Jacob is just so great. And as Marjolaine said now, um, that they are so relatable. I love that we have Jacob in there, and that we are kind of as sorry as muggles. Rude. We are more included. Sorry, I'm taking this now immediately back again because, of course, we are <laughs> witches. Um, I know what you're talking about. I'm going to hold it tomorrow. I'm okay. <laughs> but um, that we have more of that, you know, because we didn't have that too much in, in Harry Potter itself. That, yeah, it was mentioned. And yes, we had the Dursleys, of course, but they were always just an annoyance, basically. And they were just yeah. like shortly there. And now we have Jacob. <laughs> Yeah, and now we have someone awesome like Jacob, and he's in the middle of the whole story, um, or it's supposed to be. If, if I hope that they go back to more about the four. I think as well, um, Potter was so much about, like, um, it wasn't like the popular people or the amazing people, or, I mean, I guess he was the chosen one, but they were just normal kids, and so normal kids could relate to them. Yeah. Um, and I think that was very similar with the quartet and they're just yeah. it's it's like you were saying why like you know Dumbledore's such an incredible incredibly brilliant person mm. um but Newt Tina well while well, I love them dearly um they're just normal people which I think so I'm hope so we I would have thought we would get still them in all the films because we can relate so much to them because they're just like us really mm. yeah yeah, I guess we will see. see. Yeah, we would yes. see. And then in 10 years' time, we'll revisit this. Let's <laughs> see what we got right. And we got 20 more characters in movie three. <laughs> someone, someone will ask and you us, wasn't what did you it. think? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Marjolaine, I think we interrupted you. <laughs> No, I, I, it was just to add for the about the the quartet the, because, like you said, um, the trio in the in the Potter books. I, I mean, we are all the the same generation. We we grew up with the, this this these kids, and now the quartet is almost the same age that we are, and we are still growing up with with these new uh, heroes who are. We are struggling with a thing that we are struggling to uh, finding our place, finding a job. Um, I mean, we are all struggling with with, with this kind of things, um, um, taking action uh, uh, politically, um, knowing what to do, and uh, I think that's why uh, Fantasy Beats is so um, dear to me. It's because um, Joe succeed again to speak to us direct directly, and uh, even with this, um, yeah, this the last movie who maybe missed something about what place uh, they have to give for this character specifically. Um, I think it is still there the the storyline of Queenie. I mean. Of course, it could be better, but uh, I love it still because it speaks directly to us too of what choice we have to make. And uh, and yeah, they need to do more about with Tina, of course. But uh, we we will see that in the uh, in the next I movie. I think that'll be yeah, a big storyline in the next one. Yeah. Mm. Who thinks she's gonna survive this film series? No one. <laughs> <laughs> you survive. Tina, yeah. We know that Newt and Tina will survive, but uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm assuming Queenie or Jacob's. Yeah. I don't think that they can kill off Jacob. Yeah, I think it's probably going to be Queenie. It's that whole um, was it Shannon who brought up the um, oh, what's it called? Um, like with Lita, like when we found out she killed the baby, like that was it. She was going to have to die. Um, so I kind of if felt the same way died. with um. If she died, um, when Queenie joined Grindelwald, it's kind of like she's getting on thin ice. Um, whether she's gonna survive these films or not. Um, what is it called? The emotional? I don't remember. If only Shannon were here. Um, it's like a film <laughs> turn about like when you do something so bad, mm. you're not coming back from that. They're gonna kill you. Yeah. Off. Yeah. But who do you think would be worse, Jacob or Queenie? <laughs> oh, they... I think. Yeah, Jacob, I think. I'm sorry, I just but, like Jacob. <laughs> and also, I think whichever one of them would go, if they do, they might all survive. Um, 
but from Potter, someone's going to have to die. Um, mm. I think as well, whoever's left behind is going to be really obviously hugely affected by that. So that's going to be mm. really sad. It's like killing one of the twins. Um, yeah. Obviously, killing one of the Weasley twins. That was, that was really neat. Mm. It was not necessary. <laughs> no, we're sad actually, again. <laughs> yeah, actually, in, in Crimes of Windowfall, I remember that the my very first reaction when in the, in the scene when we see Queenie going through the flame, and for one second, I was. I, I had my heart explode because I was she sure was gonna she was going to die. Yeah. 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 Mm. And, and so, yeah, we had um, a glimpse of that, uh, what, what, we, what we will feel in the future, I think, because... Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, I yeah. mean, obviously, we know that Newton and Tina survive, but anyone else is on, on the table, really. Um, we well, know Joe likes killing people. Survives. So, yes. Yeah, Dumbledore yeah. survives, too. But... And Grindelwald also. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Can you imagine I, if I they kill him so... off in the last film? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Everyone would be so uh, mad. I I don't want to see I don't want to see a beast die. This is my biggest like. Oh, you can yeah. you can talk call, uh, talk about the characters and I'm like mm, yeah maybe they will die, but if you talk about let's say Pickett dying. <laughs> no. I'm not sure they would because it's like when you kill a dog in a film like that's just you can't do that um, I hope yeah, that is, they will that do that they will do that definitely I think we will have uh, we will well, have a death of no. <laughs> oh. uh, well we had one creature die and I am still in denial so he the is actually... <laughs> oh there he is Antonio. oh for Antonio you did not quick, die did you no you know what Quick note to this one: in the last episode, the owl post about Antonio was awesome, and I loved it. That's it. Back to episode four. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I think it's time our favorite segment. Don't time you think? Snacks. <laughs> I'm so excited. Pack out your snacks because it's tea Snack. and strudel time with Dougal. <laughs> I want to see I'm what ready. everyone has. Look at this cookie. Oh, <laughs> that is three quarters. And one with the Hogwarts Express. But that's, yeah. that's, that's an idea. You, you can imagine what <laughs> present it's It's <laughs> abstract. <laughs> <laughs> I have sorted caramel cheesecake. Mm. Mm. Been looking Ooh. forward to this all day. Uh, I have... And I think it turned out a little bit creepy. I don't know how much you can see, but I got actually a chocolate cupcake and oh, I put a little hat. sorting hat. He does oh, did you do that? Okay, I thought it was poop, but now you say it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I, but it, it's, I got it's caramel. Plain old, plain old scoop of here. Yeah. And it's I made, a of course, and I made some butterbeer, so. I love it. Okay. So this is this is the whole segment. We changed it a bit. We are just eating now for ten minutes. <laughs> and I bring Dougal, of course, because yes. Mm. Hey, Dougal. Dougal. With Dougal. Has he got some strudel? <laughs> I would, uh, but my back is still hurting, and I can't even. Now I'm thinking I'm eating poo. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it doesn't taste like poop. No, it tastes very good. It's very chocolatey and uh, just really yummy. But, 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 but honestly, can we move on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So our first point of these predictions of the episode is... Um, once more about the stunts, um, talking about Eddie doing many of his own stunts, Ariel would like to see Newt on a dragon. And I would like that too. I know well, there are a lot of theories um, for the for Crimes of Grindelwald. Um, so if you like squared at the screenplay, it kind of looked like a dragon, the placement of it. Um, so a lot of people were saying that maybe hmm. his um, Patronus is a dragon or like he is an animal. An, 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 
Hanamagus. I was going to say Animagi then, but that's the plural, isn't it? Um, <laughs> and he can he's turn into a dragon. Liberal. So maybe, you know, he's not riding the dragon. He just is the dragon. Mm-hmm. That would be cool. Mm. I think I there is... dragon yeah. so overrated. Sorry, but we see them, we see them in so many other shows and movies. Mm, I, I think what I do like about Fantastic Beasts is that we get to see a beast that we haven't seen before. I mean, I've heard about the Kelpie and stuff, but I never heard about the Niffler until Harry Potter. So I like that. And I want to see mm-hmm. more beasts that I don't... I have, especially those that are in mythical uh, of some countries or culture of some countries, like the Zobu. I've never heard of the Zobu, but it's a cultural thing in, I don't know, China? I think yeah. China. Yeah, sure I think it's, yeah, and I think with because we saw dragons quite a bit in Potter, maybe we weren't so much in this one. But I mean, and I wouldn't keep, say no they, to dragons. They keep mentioning it. They keep mentioning dragon. We have a mention of the dragon in the dragon, first movie. Yeah. In the first movie, there You've there is the mention in, of the, yeah. the dragon during the war. In the second, the hmm. water dragon. So I don't know. I want to see a water dragon. I mean, how does that work? Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you, I've seen them in other movies and and movie and and video games and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but if it's um, a water dragon who lives in um, Paris underground, I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see the, the how the parasite. And <laughs> mm. I yeah. want to see how the parasite gets into people. Um. If they see the water dragon or if they have to touch it or something, I would like to know that. Yeah. Hint, hint, we need an encyclopedia, please. (laughs) That would tell us these things. Uh, uh, Through our post, talking once more about the paper in Newt's hand in the newly released pictures, um, which we also talked about last episode. Um, they were speculating if it's perhaps a leaflet of the second Salemers, and it was. And uh, I just uh, thought that Sophie mentioned, I think, that... Is are you already pointing? Are you already pointing? What is it <laughs> It says, uh, witches live among us. Catchy. <laughs> I mean, it's to the point. And then there are uh, witches dancing in the wood. Mm-hmm. But aren't they naked? Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> I think. It looks, so do you have yeah, the they look quote? very naked, yes. Because <laughs> they, they that mentioned... their clothes are very tight. <laughs> <laughs> They mentioned a part yeah. of the quote that we can see on the picture. I, I don't remember why, why it is, but um, it not it's not witches lives among us. It's about the um, modern evil, something like that. Uh, but there is a background, a backside to it. Okay. Right? But I can oh. I don't okay. want to put it off my wall because. No, oh, no. <laughs> it's very up high. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh... I was just thinking that because it was mentioned in the owl post that um, the listener had been finding a picture to zoom in properly and it's just once again it's always so nice that um, there are other crazy enough people who are like just like <laughs> every detail we need to know it can so be many so many nerds important. out there I love it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's always such a fun thing to do so yeah and there were Actually, about that, they were mentioning Igor, who is, who is the master of uh, picking clues. In, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Igor. <laughs> so we we are sure that in a future episode review, we will definitely give a Dugo award to Igor at some point because Sorry, Aaron. But he was never he was never on the show, right? <laughs> yeah, he, he, I think he was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you did was. one episode then or something. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm quite now. But I think it's been quite a while ago. I don't remember which one it was either. But No, I don't remember. 
or was that just the um, live stream? There is definitely a, one yeah, live it's stream an awesome on YouTube. live stream with him, and he yeah. is in the thumbnail, and his face is so great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, that's also there. Move a little bit over there to the side yeah. and click on that one. You can see it. <laughs> so in the same picture, um, they were talking about the people behind Nude. Are they muggles? Are they magical? Uh, someone, um, I didn't write who said this, so that was helpful. Thank you, Past Jennifer. Um, someone said um, maybe they could be second Salem Salemers and he has to get through them, which I mean was right. I mean he didn't like it wasn't difficult. He just walked. <laughs> well, he didn't have to like battle his way through them. He just walked. But I mean they were right. Yeah, but he did push somebody away and put master on her on face. face. <laughs> poor Tina. <laughs> poor Tina and her poor hot dog. She can't even eat it. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I I I I watched the film once. Uh, no, once <laughs> when I watched the film, <laughs> I did just watch it once. Once I, when I watched the film, I realized two women in the background. They were standing, I think, behind Tina when Jacob's walking up to them, um, and they look so suspicious. They're like, you know, hiding a little bit and. They're in very bright red color, and I think the other one is wearing green. They look like witches to me. Oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe someone was keeping an eye on them because of what Tina had done in the past, just making sure it's not going to happen again. Mm, maybe. So you mean they are, uh, they are keeping an eye out for Tina? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, but but then, not, then they didn't know, did at they? Her. Um. I would, if they looked at her, I would say so. But I think... They are looking at uh, Mary Lou. Yeah. Like, what the crap are you on about, woman? Oh, no. That's not a swear. That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, speaking of Mary Lou, uh, Shannon says, this crowd, they don't look like they're protesting. No, but Mary Lou is. <laughs> <laughs> She's just trying to pull people in. Yeah. And I mean, they I are at least they're... listening, aren't they? Yeah, they're listening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are some other people standing behind Mary Lou that are protesting. Oh, and by the way, there's also a moment when Credence looks up and she's looking at Tina. And I think it's the in, into the, uh, the moment he realized it's her. Because I yeah, was looking was in a, at the... In the screenplay, there was... Some, and I think it's later on, but there's a thing where like a note where it says that like he's dreamed about her for months and oh yeah it was like when he's yeah. supposed to wasn't he oblivious but maybe because he's yeah, obscure, maybe, like it didn't exactly i think because he's magical maybe it didn't work yeah it didn't work i don't remember that at all some things yeah, yeah some things you can't really get from the actual um film but i read the screenplay fairly recently yeah, cool. and i remember like i'd forgotten about that um, yeah, I have read the screenplay, I have it here as well, but I was reading it, I think, straight away after the movie came out, or mm -hmm. shortly after, so it's been a long time, so I don't remember this this detail anymore, so I've maybe I should read it again. Lot. Yeah, I've read it quite a few times recently, because <laughs> mostly so I can get quotes for our um, social media, um, it's <laughs> a good excuse to go through it, because it doesn't take very... Have we lost Sophie? No, I'm oh. still here. Okay, I just can't see you anymore. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she just uh, wanted to show us <laughs> Tina for a moment. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> exactly, right. <laughs> and like, because it's quite, it doesn't take that long to read through it either. Um, so yeah, I, I like true. to do it every now and then. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, speaking of uh, that place, um, we're seeing Newt running in front of the bank where Mary Lou is protesting and they were speculating why he is running. <laughs> it's it's a a on the <laughs> Oh wait, wait, I've got one here. <laughs> oh, it's pastry. I can, oh. I have one, but <laughs> my back and I can't reach them. <laughs> well, we can't see you right now anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I, I will be back, I promise. Are you getting changed? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I need to pull off my shirt. It's so hot. Just for five minutes. Let I me, was thinking, do it. if we can't see her, surely she's getting naked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we are seeing the Niffler collecting all the shiny things, which just reminds me, actually, I have a little Niffler bank. He's holding a coin and That's you can so cute. you can keep your little change in there. So uh, every every now and then, actually, it's quite funny that my boyfriend, uh, if he has some small money, he's asking me, where's the Niffler? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> right there in the glass case. A... Oh, try not to knock it over. Um, I got this from my secret Santa, Samantha, um, when we did our speech oh, yeah. secret Santa. It's wow. a... Um, little Niffler jewelry stand yeah and he he looks after all my shiny things <laughs> I do have oh. wait I do have somehow I have to move somehow eh, eh, eh. so there is a bag are you okay there is a Niffler every episode we have a new weird noise now last time it was beeping <laughs> this time it's okay <laughs> I have fake pain, okay? <laughs> I'm amazed I can sit on my bed. <laughs> um, so, uh, second Salomers, um, there's one more thing about them. Second Salomers are wearing purple, was the question. Um, they were mentioning that in the picture it looked like, uh, well, Mary Lou, we know, is wearing this purple coat. And in the crowd that she's talking to, there were several people with hats that had these purple ribbons around them. And uh, after, maybe it's just me, but after rewatching last night, I tried to pay attention to it. And I did not see that anymore in the actual movie. On the picture, you can see it, but not in the movie itself. Have they changed that? Or maybe, like, if the filter's not the same, maybe yeah. you can't see the purple as much. Mm. Yeah. Because I think it so, was was Ariel that was saying, like, I really don't want them to ruin purple, like they ruined pink with Umbridge. Because mm. uh, <laughs> purple's always you, been you a magical the... colour anyway, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, yeah. Know the, you know the meme? You know this meme from Umbridge uh, on Wednesday we were pink, yeah, and now it it will change to and Thursdays we were purple. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Colin Atro was uh, aware of Joe's writing about purple being a wizarding color because uh, I think it was a strange, um, strange and fun thing that uh, a woman like Mary Lou is wearing this specific color because I could actually imagine it was just on purpose to yeah uh, very well off. yeah when she's yeah, like the most just to make to make fun of her magic person little. ever <laughs> to make mm. fun of them <laughs> wow yeah then Shannon says 1932 dragon incident Will we see this happening in the movies? Maybe oh. as a, and I'm thinking maybe as a newspaper article, as we have had in the first movie that it oh, shows up cool. somewhere. I loved that first scene in the movie so much, where it was just all the newspapers, and you've got all the fun mm -hmm. stories as well. Because if you pause on them, yeah. you can read them all. And I yeah. got a shirt which has yeah. like all the newspapers on it. I think that's a really cool way of showing you what's happened, especially because we're going to have jumps between films. I think I'm hoping they use that again. I was sad yeah, that wasn't in Crimes of Grindelwald. <laughs> yeah, they only had um, a short moment of nudes. But there was a new newspaper. Nudes, yeah, yeah, the newspaper was nudes, book release. Um... Spellbound, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Spellbound. Maybe. This stupid tabloid that ruined my relationship. <laughs> I mean, their <laughs> relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, speaking of of the Ilvermon, uh, Ilvermon incident with the Ilvermon. dragons. I can't say it. I'm not English. It's okay if I can't say a word. <laughs> uh, I want you to read the fan fiction Ilvercomb incident on Archive of Your Own. It will be. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. So I don't know where that's going to be. Um, I think it's below. Yeah, um, it's down there. 
but I'll put a link down there. So go read. Yes, and uh, I, it's really beautiful, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's at least mentioned. Uh, I I also when I wrote this into the doc, it was shortly before we started the episode. I thought maybe it was uh, she will make this into something that was um, made out uh, made by a Grindelwald. So he is the bad guy, and Newt this will Newt will be the savior of uh, everything. That, that would, would be so. cool. Like Grindelwald had kind of released the dragon to go kill the yeah. muggles or something. Yeah, that, that sounds like something Grindelwald would do because yeah. he doesn't care yeah. about uh, muggles. And then you and Tino he, got like a everyone. That would be really yeah. Cool. And, and he wants to the the muggles to know that they are wizards, so he wouldn't be uh, like we have to do this in 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 all secrecy. Or he's mm. just simply using it as a, as a distraction to get away. Maybe. He's riding the dragon. <laughs> there we have it. Not he is you, the dragon. But he, he is the dragon. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> like with a cowboy hat and stuff. <laughs> hmm. uh, Shannon moved on to saying the third movie is going to be about catching Nessie. And Ariel said, Newt will write it. <laughs> so we have a lot, of, a lot of writing this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a way, yes, we did kind of get that. Um, because according to J.K. Rowling, uh, the, that Nessie is actually a Kelpie who can change form. And she just, this Kelpie um, prefers to be messy and uh, confuse people and get the paparazzis and such so that she gets the <laughs> public um, attention. I remember when we first got that scene in the trailer, there was so much, you know, people saying like, is it, is it Nessie? Is it because mm. especially when he came out of the water, it looked like Scotland. Yeah. And, but obviously it was just his like environment, but we don't, we, I mean, we don't know for sure that it's not Nessie. Um, maybe yeah, in the next be. film he has to take Nessie home or something. That would be cool. It would be so great if it was just a few moments or, or even just mentioned if Newt said, yeah, I was in Scotland, I had to release the uh, my Kelpie. Yeah. <laughs> I was at yeah. Loch Ness and here I am. <laughs> I really like that idea, actually. That's yeah, nice. I love it. Yeah, I'm sure we will see and... more of the Kelpie in the future because it, he, yeah. it, it's just... Uh, a gorgeous beast and we well yeah yeah we, we will we will have it on the Loch Ness I'm sure now you you convince me <laughs> <laughs> and this time when he's writing it he will put off his shirt because yes. Tina says so and not Bunty <laughs> <laughs> yes if you also go to our um Twitter page right now um there is some amazing fan art of that <laughs> yeah that's a great one <laughs> Uh, the next point is something that um, I think we all would really love, which is the hosts were wishing for the part in the in the book um, why Megazoology matters to be read as a voiceover of sorts at the end of the last movie, possibly read by Eddie Newt Redman, himself. Yes, please. yes. <laughs> that would be kind of nice to fade out, like showing maybe his life at that time then how he grew old with Tina and their measles and I was um, gonna say I'd like that to be the ending well, like, yeah the and then he's having that. this little voice over of why it's important That'd be nice that would be really yeah cute. it would be really cute yeah but we know that the movies are not about magizology anymore so mm. <laughs> <laughs> we can go back to it it's not yeah. like we finished with COG, we, it's just the second movie. If they want to, they can go back to all of what we saw in the first movie. And even I more still beast. have hope. I still have yeah. hope. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe <laughs> maybe the, the beast would be so important in the end that uh, we can read this part uh, differently with what happened. Because for now we, we see it like um, any scientist who talk about what what uh, 
why his science is important, but now we can see that uh, indeed magiosology saved the world, so <laughs> it's important. So maybe. Yeah. But also in the mm -hmm. first movie, he kind of, I mean, in a very short version of it, he mentioned to Tina why it's important mm -hmm. uh, to be aware of the beast and what, what they're good for. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I just remembering the scene. It's so cute. <laughs> like an extermination guide? <laughs> <laughs> I watched it yesterday and um, that bit when she hides behind the desk. <laughs> that just cracks me up every time. I love her. She just what? goes straight down and it's like, do you really think that's going to work? And then she just like peels back up again. <laughs> Well, it was worth a try. <laughs> In the newt case, as we mentioned, Erin uh, came up with the hide behind. Uh, oh, which... We don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't we get... don't like you anymore. <laughs> Even with time, it doesn't get any less creepy. No. Um, um, after we got the full description of the terrible creature, Shannon throws a fun prediction at us. She says, "Plot movie of uh, not the plot of movie three. Too many hide behinds are t are attacking people. Alcohol repels it, as we have already mentioned. <laughs> and so Newt needs to end prohibition of alcohol to ensure people are safe again." <laughs> So everyone can just get drunk <laughs> and the hide-behinds are not interested anymore. <laughs> and, I like uh, that. Yeah. And Aaron just, uh, I love this so much. Aaron says, a beer a day keeps the hide-behind away. <laughs> <laughs> I say that and my therapist is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mentioning the hide behind? <laughs> <laughs> if I did that, I'm we go in the clinic, then I can say you. <laughs> Next episode, Sophie is missing, and we are just like, what happened? <laughs> Either she mentioned the hide behind, or it got her. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't live in America. We are safe here. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're fine. It's good. Yeah, they, we have, they, we, have yeah. A, we have scary enough creatures everywhere here. Yeah, <laughs> really, but they really, were not so so specific about where the hide behind uh, lives. So um, maybe we can still see it in Brazil. Maybe I maybe. don't know. Hmm. I think it it's the kind, the kind of beast with, which I definitely can can. Uh, figure in the woods or something like that so that would be cool yeah in the forest I, so, I find it so interesting that right now with what with, with, uh, with what is happening in the Amazonas um, and we get a movie about it it would be so interesting to see it I, mm. I don't know it's like every time I read about it I'm like do they really want still want to go there, or as mm -hmm. I mean, with the with the movie, I'm I'm aware they're not really going there, but because it's it is terrifying what is happening there. That's true. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm drinking my beer now oh, because that's sad. sad. <laughs> that's just the empty quantity. <laughs> it's so sad. Every now and then, this just it just goes really quiet. <laughs> we all get sad. I know how we yeah. can end this. How we can end this in a cheery mode because I uh, a cheery mood. My friend just uh, sent me a picture yesterday. I wanted to include. Uh, she was sending me a picture with saying, "Do you think the Sorting Hat has taken another job? Can you see it?" <laughs> <laughs> but that's oh. 
he needs a summer job. I mean, he's only busy in term time. <laughs> and I just answered her, her that he probably had one last summer vacation party night out, out, uh, pa- party night out. Oh my goodness! Because <laughs> tomorrow he has to be back at Hogwarts and sorting new kids. Let's hope that he makes it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God. he does only. Um, that's the only day work. when he's needed, right? He only like does stuff on September first. Yeah, true. So, that's, but he doesn't really have a, a conscious, right? Like he's not. I mean, he makes up those songs. So yeah, he and according to what is actually happening, so he kind of is a bit. Hmm. Has and anyone yeah. ever properly looked into it? If there is a brain, maybe. I mean, you can you can pull out all sorts of things out of this hat. Maybe there is a brain. <laughs> no, I just imagine he pulls out the the sword and the. Yeah, I was just thinking, is the sword good for his brain? Do do we know how hat brains work? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe there's a special compartment for that. <laughs> Disgusting. Okay, so I, yeah. So am I the only one who? Is thinking about the the um, disturbing picture of Hagrid that we had on the cover. Oh moment. no, I forgot about that. <laughs> As I'm sure now you ruined it again. I made everyone funny. happy. <laughs> I got this picture so much that day. Like every person who knows me yeah. sent this thing to me. <laughs> hmm. I'm sure all the viewers have seen it. It's the one of Hagrid naked in front of the fire with the sword in hat on his sword in a in the head. On his, Manly parts. Um, and I, yeah, I'm sure if you are a Potter fan, everyone you know said it to you. <laughs> and you were slightly traumatized. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> Once you have seen it, you can't unsee it anymore. Well, nope. So if you haven't seen it, I would not advise Googling it. You do not need that vision. <laughs> Still, we tell you it. all about it here. You are aware. You are aware. The moment you say don't Google it, people will Google it. <laughs> Don't, please don't. So, all that is left is the contacts, and we give that over to Jennifer as always because she has such a lovely accent and does a great job doing it. Oh, thank you. I always say it wrong, so I'm determined to get it right this time. (laughs) This is the charm of the episodes. (laughs) So, you can listen to Sweet Beastie on all places podcasts are found. You can. Yeah, I said that right. <laughs> I second guessed myself after. <laughs> you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Speak Beastie, and I would definitely recommend if you haven't already checking that out because there's going to be many, many posts tomorrow. Um, you can find yeah. us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Speak Beastie, on Tumblr at Speak Beastie Podcast.tumblr.com. You can email us at Speak Beastie at gmail.com, and you can also support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash Speak Beastie. And you become a member of the awesome common room if you go a uh, Thunderbird level um, and you can chat to us and you can be on this Skype call and have a lot of fun. And have snacks. Oh, with and us, you get always. Always, uh, snacks, always snacks. <laughs> um, you can also get the chance to guest host on an episode, which mm-hmm. is lots of fun. Would recommend. So I've been Jennifer. I think I'm Melanie. I'm still Marjolaine. And I will call, always continue to be Sophie. Case, Case closed. closed. Close. Is closed. <laughs> that went really well. <laughs>